worship you this morning. We exalt you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your unending love. We exalt you this morning. We ask that you speak to us. I yield myself that you speak through me today and help us, O oh God, to be better for it. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. This morning I'll be talking on rainbows. Rainbows, it's a reminder. And when I believe I first heard rainbows, I was wondering why such a controversial topic, you know? It has been hijacked. But I believe that that's what God wants us, wants to remind us of, rainbows, rainbows. When you hear, or when you see a rainbow, you see it in the sky after, usually after the rains, and it brings joy. It's a wonder. It's not something you see every day, is it? It's been a while I've seen a rainbow. It's not something you see every day, but when you see it, it brings joy. It brings a smile. It's just a reminder. It's a reminder of something. The rainbow we are talking about is the rainbow with roig beef, the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, green, indigo, and violet, so that we are clear. The full rainbow, the one God first gave to us. Let's see our text from Genesis chapter 9, verse 8 to 17. Genesis 9, 8 to 17. Then God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, and as for me, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you. Of all that go out of the ark, every beast of the earth. Thus I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in the cloud and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. It shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. The waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. The rainbow shall be in the cloud and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, this is a sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Here we see God speaking to Noah. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 6, you know, God was saying he was grieved that he made man. He saw the wickedness. He saw the, the, the evil. And it grieved him that he made man. And he grieved his heart. And he thought, no, let me wipe it all off. Let me clear it and start again. And then he found in Noah a faithful man, a righteous man. And God, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And God instructed him to make an ark so that he can be saved. And then Noah obeyed and built the ark. When he built the ark, then God instructed, put in the animals, the ones that will be preserved. And two by two, the animals came in. And then God shut the door and the rain fell for 40 days and 40 nights. And it filled everywhere and wiped out everything except for the ark. Everything that was outside was wiped out. And then after a while, you know, Noah kept sending the bird out to check if it was safe, if it was okay to come out of the ark. And when he did, he made an, a, a, a sacrifice unto God. He made an offering unto God and then God spoke. And God said, I will never, do this thing again. I will set this rainbow as a reminder, as a reminder that I will not wipe out, I will not be so angry to wipe out all the earth again. It will be a reminder of my covenant between me and all men. Not just between him and Noah, but between him 
and all men. So the rainbow we are talking about this morning is the rainbow of the covenant, the reminder of the covenant that we have with God. The reminder of the covenant that God has made with us. You know, there are other places when you see something, when God uses um, an analogy, you, can, you need to check other places in the Bible to see if that thing is established by the mouth of two or three. And there are other places in the Bible that talks about the rainbow just describing. So it's an intentional thing that God did when he talked about the rainbow. Exodus chapter 1 verse 28. Exodus 1 28. Exodus 1 28 talking about the beauty. Media thing. Oh, sorry, Ezekiel. I was wondering. Ezekiel 128. Ezekiel. Thank you. Like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. So when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard a voice of one speaking. So describing the rainbow again, like the appearance of a rainbow, talking about the glory of the Lord, the beauty that it brings of a rainbow, you know, on a rainy day. So was the appearance of the brightness all around it. Let's see also Revelation chapter 4, verse 3. Revelation 4, 3. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in, light, in appearance like an emerald. Describing, this is John on the island of Patmos, describing the beauty of heaven. And he said, like a rainbow, mentioning the rainbow again. And this time, you know, theologians believe that the green, the emerald, signifies life and eternal life. So the rainbow is symbolic. The rainbow means something. And lastly, just to show other places where the rainbow is talked about in the Bible, Revelation chapter 10, verse 1, talking about the mighty angel. I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun, and his seat like pillars of fire. So rainbows are positive, is a positive thing. When God put it there, when God, you know, talked about it, that I will set the rainbow, he knew what it was. He meant it, and he knew, you know, he had reasons for it. So there are many things. Science now has described how a rainbow comes about you know we we'll always find a, an explanation for these things and they say that it is usually after the rains then the light from the sun deflects on the on the water water particles and then like refraction and then it reflects to become the rainbow that's how the rainbows are formed so usually we see rainbows after the rains but there are sometimes there are exceptions when the the you can see a rainbow and an exception will be maybe sunrise or sunset because it's the sun is the light that brings the rainbow so when you but when you see the rainbow of the sunlight or sunset it's not the roy g beef rainbow it's not the colorful rainbow it's usually the red rainbow so the rainbow that god puts there is the one that comes after the rains the one that comes after the storm after the storm there are so many things that we can learn from the rainbow most importantly this morning the first thing is that the rainbow is a reminder the rainbow is a reminder and what is god reminding us let's see our text verse 13 to 15 of the rainbow being a reminder Genesis chapter 9, verse 13 to 15. Thank you. I set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. It shall be, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. 
and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. The waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. It shall be a reminder, you know, to remember the everlasting covenant. A reminder between it will remind me of my covenant with you. Not that God forgot, but it's usually for us, you know. I will remember and you too, you will see it and you will remember of the covenant that we have with God. And that, what does that covenant signify? For Noah at that time, it was that earth will not be, will not be wiped out again. And it's still that same covenant we have with the Lord. That there, we have hope. We have hope. We have hope. And from then on, you know, the, the, the rainbow came after a time of judgment. God had judged the earth. He had already given, he had already sent, he had made a verdict. I will wipe them out. Let, let them all go. It's just like how we are. Sometimes when we get angry, you know, I just don't want to see you. You know, just leave. And that was what happened. He wiped out everything. And God was, you know, he, 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 he felt it. And he, I don't, don't let me say he felt it. I believe that's just my own imagination. And he felt, no, I won't do this again. I won't do this again. So it's a reminder. So every time you see a rainbow, you have hope that God will not in his wrath be so angry. He will not be so, so angry to wipe out everything all over again. He will not. He will not without a plan. He will not. And it's also a promise, a promise of grace, a promise of his love, a promise of grace, the grace that he extended to Israel, as we will see after. Israel were, I don't, I don't know, the, the kind of people are, and sometimes when we look at ourselves, we are like Israel. You know, you keep going and you come back. And they will, any slight discomfort, they are grumbling. Any small thing, ah, why, why, why? They are grumbling. And they should, you know, you would, sometimes you would imagine that if I were with them, when they walked the Red Sea, Anytime they say God, immediately you answer. But not with Israel. They will still ask for another thing and ask for another thing. But the rainbow is a, is a reminder that he will not, even with their, is one, one rookie that is coming to my mind. I'm trying to look for the English translation of one rookie. Even with their stubbornness and their hard hearts, he will never you know just leave us he won't leave them to their to themselves he will be angry for a while but again he will call them to himself he will be angry for a bit and tell them go to most call go and talk to them go and tell them go and do this but by the time it took abraham just abraham to intercede for sodom and gomorrah and god said okay let these two, these people that are there, let Lot leave. So God will not, because of the rainbow, because of his covenant with us, he will not remain angry forever. He will not turn his back upon us forever. He will not. And because of that, he set a plan in place. Our God is a God, he says it and he does it. He doesn't just say something and then you start scrambling to see how it will happen. Once he says it, there's a plan in place already. And that plan in place is our Lord Jesus Christ. That plan in place so that everyone will not be wiped out again is our Lord Jesus Christ. So the rainbow signifies hope. There is hope. So when I see the rainbow, I know that there is hope. I have hope in him who has called me. I have hope in him who formed me. I have hope in him who will not turn his back on me forever. Hallelujah. I have hope. I have hope. Hope in his covenant that he will not be angry forever. He will not turn his back on me forever. You know, when God turns his back so that for clarity, it's because of our own sin. It's because of our own sin. It's because of our own sin. But even then, the Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So we have hope. So God's covenant, what does his covenant say? God had a covenant with Adam when he formed him. 
had a covenant with him, with Noah, as we see this morning, with Moses, with Israel, he had a covenant, with David, he had a covenant. And we have the new covenant in Jesus. We have the new covenant with Jesus. The covenant is written in his word, such that everything he says he will do, he will do. When you talk about, when you talk about a covenant, it's an agreement between two people. So I have my part, you have your part to play. For Abraham, God knew that he could not keep that covenant. God put him to sleep and walked by it by himself and walked by the animals, the separated animals. Can we remember that story? He walked through it by himself. God keeps his covenant. We have our own part to play in the covenant. We have our own part to play and that part is obedience. We have heard it over and over, over and over. When there is a word, when there is an instruction, then we have to obey. But we have a reminder again that he will keep his own side of the covenant. He will keep his part of the bargain. He will not forget his covenant. God always remembers his covenants. Let's see Ex um, Exodus chapter 2, verse 24. Exodus 2, 24. So God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God remembered. This was Israel. After all, you know, they had, they had seen where, and God heard their groanings. And then he rescued them. He put a plan in place. And he rescued them. So God remembers. Psalm 106 verse 45. Psalm 106 verse 45. And for their sake he remembered his covenant. And relented according to the multitude of his mercies. For their sakes he remembered his covenant. So the, their sin, their everything had stood in there in the middle. This, you know, distorting the plans. But for their sake, he remembered his covenant and the multitude of his mercies, he set them free. So a rainbow is a reminder that God will remember his covenant. Psalm 105, verse 8 to 10, just showing us that God will remember. Psalm 105, verses 8 to 10, he remembers his covenant forever. The word which he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac, and confirmed it to Jacob for his statute to Israel as an everlasting covenant. We are his Israel, and we have an everlasting covenant. So a rainbow is a reminder of his covenant. As a church, God's word to us this year is new beginnings. We just heard about it again new beginnings that's his word his word is his, his that's his covenant to us he will keep his side of the covenant all we need to do is obey accept it and obey obey the instructions luke chapter 1 verse 72 talking about god still remembering in the new testament his covenant was actually referring to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. So anytime we see a rainbow, it's a reminder that God will concerning me remember his covenant. He will do as he has said and it will be so for me. So covenants require obedience. I've said that we must obey we must obey to keep our own side in law when we talk about a contract it's a type of a covenant there's a, an offer there's a consideration and an acceptance so i make an offer i want to sell my pair of glasses then you must how much Ten thousand naira and then okay eight thousand and then you must pay that's an offer, acceptance, and uh, offer, consideration, and an acceptance. There must be a consideration, and that consideration is obedience. It's obedience. We must obey to do it. Deuteronomy talks about God talking about the, the promises. If you will obey, if you will obey, then it will be as this, as this for you. But if you disobey, then this is what you will see. 
The same thing with Jesus. If you accept him as your Lord and your Savior, then you have the promise of eternal life. If you accept him as your Lord and Savior, then you have all things freely to enjoy. But you must accept him. So for the covenant to be active, for the covenant, the covenant is there. But for you to activate it, then you must obey. There must be an, an acceptance of that offer and a consideration of obedience. So when you see a rainbow, it's a reminder of his covenant. It's a reminder to me daily. Am I accepting his offer? Am I living in line with his plans and his purpose for me? Jesus came as a fulfillment of the covenant. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Matthew 5 17. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill it. Galatians, let's see 2 Peter 1, verse 3. 2 Peter 1, 3. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. So in accepting Jesus, who is the fulfillment of the law, then we have all things to enjoy. Let's see the Amplified Version and the NLT. Amplified For his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited to live life, to, to life and godliness through the full personal knowledge of him who has called us by and to his own glory and excellence and virtue. Just talking about Jesus, once we accept him, then, and we live in line of obedience, then we have accepted that offer. We are in the covenant and it is activated in our lives. One thing to say is that the rainbow when it appears and when it appears, everyone sees it just to show that God is impartial. It doesn't have any favorite or any special person. It's just see it. Everyone sees it. Everyone who is in an angle sees it. He gave it to everyone. He said, my covenant to all living things, to everyone who will believe. So the difference in activating that covenant, that's what makes it special to you, is the consideration and the acceptance. The second thing that we must note, after having stated that God remembers his covenant, is that the rainbow comes usually after the rain. It comes usually after the rain. I've already stated earlier the times when the rainbow can come, when you can see a rainbow. They are, when I was uh, you know, trying to research into rainbows, I saw that you can even see double rainbows. You can see double rainbows. And there are, there are different types of rainbows. I've only seen one rainbow, the usual regular rainbow. I've not even seen the red one that comes from sunset or sunlight. Um, from sunset or sundown. So, but rainbows usually come after the rain. So, are you going through a storm in life currently? Is it dark seasons for you? Does it look like there will be no help again? 40 days rain, 40 nights, flooding everywhere. It seems like, no, you don't understand what I'm going through. Is you, you, I can't explain it. You know what, what they say, when it rains, it pours. It may, you may feel like you are going through that now. But a rainbow is coming. Because the rainbow needs that, light, that water to shine, to reflect, to refract the light. A rainbow is coming. A rainbow is coming. There is hope. Psalm 30 verse 5b says, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So when you see a rainbow, you are reminded that despite the rains, whether heavy or light showers, where despite the dark seasons, because before it rains, the clouds will first gather. 
and it will get darker and then it will rain and after you may see a rainbow. So we have hope and we hold on to hope when we see a rainbow. We know that after the rains, after the darkness, there will be a rainbow. We may see a rainbow. The only thing is the rainbow can be missed because it doesn't last forever. Just like fresh dew, it doesn't last forever. It's not every time you see it. It's not a given that it will happen. I can't just look out now and that, okay, maybe it will, it will rain later and then I expect a rainbow. It's not a given. And when it does appear, it's just according to Guinness World Record research, that is less than an hour. It just appears for less than one hour. So you can miss it. You can miss that reminder. But we know that we have a covenant with God. Because it's just a reminder. When something is a reminder, it means that there's something in place, isn't it? It's there. But in case you forgot, gentle reminder. You know when you send those uh, office mails? Here's a gentle reminder. Here's a kind reminder. So the rainbow is a kind reminder that there is hope. Weeping may endure for the night. It may seem like everything that can go wrong is going wrong. But pastor says something. Pastor will say, the worst, he has not allowed the worst to happen. So even if it seems like everything is bad, everything is turning, you remember, God has not allowed the worst to happen. And there is hope. That weeping may endure for the night. The night will not last forever. For Noah in the ark, the night was 40 days and 40 nights of rain. But there was light. And there was a rainbow. Another thing I would like to say this morning is that the rainbow is a personal experience. The rainbow is a personal experience. Why do I say this? Scientists have studied and found out that no two people can see the same rainbow. It's the same rainbow we are seeing, isn't it? But because we are seeing it at different angles, it's not the exact same thing that I'm seeing that you can see. So it's a personal thing. What does the covenant mean to you? What do I need him for now? How is my walk with him now? When God appeared, you know, in the Old Testament, he will say, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He could have said, I'm the God of your fathers, you know. But a walk, each one, he revealed himself to each person separately and differently. Just like the elephant. You know, we've, I'm sure we've all heard the story of the elephants when blind, four blind men or three blind men were asked to describe the elephant. One saw the tail, point, you know, he felt the tail and said, ah, he's long and so, so, and so. The one that felt the body said it's like a wall. The one that felt the tusks. So it's a personal experience. The rainbow is a personal, it has a personal meaning to you if you are a child of the covenant. It matters how far you've gone with him, where you are at your walk with him. Because no two people can, it's the same rainbow, but they don't see the same rainbow. So God deals with us individually. His word for me, even though it's new beginnings, he may start with my career. He may start with your finances. He may start with my walk with him, deeper revelation, new realms of his glory. He may start with you in the place of understanding and knowing him, in the place of trusting him. So it's different. My walk with him will determine, and your walk too with him will determine. It's a personal thing. So he's God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. He could have said, I'm God. He's still God of Israel. He's the I am. 
So when we accept him, we must accept him, we must choose him, and we must have a walk with him. Such that when I see the rainbow, that reminder is general for us all. The word of new beginnings is general for us all, but it's different for me. Because it will affect me in, as I need it in specific areas. So when I see a rainbow, it's a reminder of my covenant with him. Or his covenant with me. Better put. So how far have you gone with your walk with him? How much of him do you know? We cannot, we cannot exhaust God. It's impossible. How much more are you hungry to know? So the next time you see a rainbow, it's a reminder of your walk with him, of your individual experience with him. When um, during Chris CFC, I always say it, class two, faith. There is not, God does not have any favorites. Acts chapter 10, verse 34 to 35. Acts 10, 34 to 35. Let's see it. Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. And in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. So I always say that, Baba Deboye, you know, if you have ever seen or attended Holy Ghost Convention, I've, I've, I've never attended, but I've watched on TV. He would pray, and the one I saw that day, I was sleepy. You know how the TV is on and you are just flowing vigil? And I was sleepy. I saw the man stand up from his wheelchair and walk. I jumped, me, I, I can walk, but I jumped up. The, ah, raw power. The only difference is the time in which he has put in. If we would put in that same time and obedience and pay the price, greater works shall you do also. If you will put in that time, that obedience, study of the word, and whatever he says you do, you do it, you have the same results. So it's a work. It's a personal thing. It's a personal thing. Why are we talking about rainbows this morning? Why are we reminding ourselves of this covenant? Of the fact that it's a personal work? Why? First thing is that to remind us of his unconditional love to all, especially to those bound by the covenant. So whatever it is that you may think or whatever it is that you are going through, whatever condition, even if you think it is your sin, the rainbow is there for all. Everybody sees it. Just like the sun. God does not shine the sun only. If not, we all have many rainbows. It will be only for me alone. But it's for all. Is unconditional love. Is there to remind you. You can always come back home. You can always come back home. No matter how far you think you have gone. There's no excuse. You can always come back home. And if you think, oh, I failed him again. His rainbow is his unconditional love. I will never destroy the earth again. I will remember my covenant. My covenant of life. My covenant of my love for you. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have bought you with a price. Also, to remind ourselves definitely of hope. Of hope. Regardless of how deep the pit, Joseph was in a pit. From pit, you think things will get better. To prison, uh, to Potiphar's house. Potiphar's house, that's slavery. To prison. Prison is a terrible place. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible place. 
it's by virtue of work oh, that I know. <laughs> I've never been. <laughs> it's a terrible place. I usually say that you can't spend the night in prison as a prisoner, not as a warder, as a prisoner, and come out the same. Something would have shifted in you. No. Something, uh, no, you can't be the 100% you took in and come out. No. Especially with our Nigerian prisons. No. But still, he had hope. He believed in his God. And then from there, he became the prime minister. So there is hope. There is hope. I don't think he can get that dark. But even if he gets that dark or even darker, there is hope. You are not alone. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Finally, we learned it to see the individual purpose of his covenant with me, with you. You can insert your name. So that you can evaluate. So that you can, you know, be reminded. He's there. He's just there. It's for us to come. It's for us to accept that offer and to pay the price, the consideration. The covenant is there. Glory to God forever. Glory to God. So we must remember to accept that offer. Accept the offer of his covenant. He has a covenant for you. But you must accept it. You must pay the price. Am I paying the price? The price of obedience is not asking for anything. Just obey. Just to simply obey. Simply obey. The rainbow does not last forever. The reminder is there. And you don't see it for a while. And then it comes back again. This morning, God is sending out his rainbow. Reminding you of his covenant with you, of, of his covenant with you, of his unending love. He's reminding you that I have said it before I formed you, I knew your mother's womb, I knew you. So, what are you going through that is strange or new to him? So, he's reminding us of his covenant to us. It's reminding us that weeping may endure for the night. It may seem like the rains have destroyed everything. How will new beginnings start with this rain? How will I see fresh dew? There is hope. That's the reminder. And finally, of our walk with him. Where are you in the place, on the scales of obedience? Where are you? on the scales of your thirst for him. How much do you weigh on the scale of sacrifice for him? What are you doing? Can he depend on you? God is always faithful. The Bible says that he remains faithful even when we are unfaithful because he cannot deny himself. Are you faithful in service? Have you joined an activity team? Are you serving him? Can he count on you? Can he give an instruction and know that you will follow through? So I know him, I serve the Lord, but can he depend on me? Remember the rainbow is there. Is there a reminder? A reminder. He hasn't changed his mind towards you. Let's just bow down our heads. Let's respond to the Lord. Let's adjust the men. Let's tell him we are grateful. Thank you for reminding me, O oh Lord, of your love for me. Thank you for Jesus who came and died that I may have eternal life. 
Thank you for the work of the cross. Thank you because through that work, I have everything I need for life and godliness. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us again of your love. Thank you for your covenant that remains sure and steadfast. We receive the grace to continue to obey. We receive the grace to continue to walk with you closely in Jesus' name. If you are here, you cannot lay claim on that covenant if you have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior. That covenant of everlasting love, of hope, of a good mind, of every good and godly thing, of all that pertains to life and godliness, you cannot lay claims to it if you do not give your life to Christ. If you are here today and you have not given your life, this is an opportunity. The rainbow is cast, is a reminder. Come home, come to me, says your father. If, you are, if there is any such person here, can you just lift up your hand? We'll pray with you. Anyone? Anyone? We want to come home to the Father so that you too can begin to experience new beginnings. You can have hope indeed. Hope that even though it seems dark now, everything is dark. But there is hope that light is coming. Any such hand? If you are online, just say this prayer. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I confess my sins and I ask that you come into me. I ask that you be my Lord and Savior and you wash me with your blood. Thank you for accepting me as your son or daughter. I believe I'm saved now in Jesus' name. Amen. You can message the number scrolling on the screen and get in touch with us. If there are needs in the house, the rainbow is up. He will meet every need. He is able. He is sufficient. He is more than sufficient for those needs. Can we just stand up and present those needs to the Lord? Let's just present the needs together and tell him you are covenant keeping God. You will not fail us. We thank you because we'll see the manifestation of the answers to these needs this week in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the needs of your people. Thank you because they are met supernaturally. Thank you, Lord, because you will do as you have said and you will not fail us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we see the manifestations of this needs this needs be met speedily according to your plan and purpose in jesus name let's just rejoice and thank him let's thank him for answering our prayers let's thank him in hope